Let's start with the first one because that's an excellent intro and that is the Satrix Finney 15. So this is the one that tracks the FTSE JSE Financial 15. That means the big banks, the big life insurers, mm -hmm. the financial services stocks and some REITs, but we must go into that. So this is one that's been around a long time. It's been on the market since 2011. Of course, the Satrix series is underpinned by Sunlum now, I think it is, because they Indeed. own the Satrix entity. Yes. So give us your overall view here. This is clearly where the pain is going to be extreme in the event that they have a big funding cost hike because of a debt downgrade. Absolutely. I think you're spot on in terms of that assessment. So yes, the 50% of that FINI 15 index is made up by just four companies. And it's mm -hmm. the two big life insurance companies, Sunlove and Old Mutual. Mutual. Yep. And it's the two big banks. So it's Standard Bank and, and First, First Rand. Rand. The others are also there and yeah. there's some REITs as well. But really the bulk of it, so you can REITs, see where it's coming from. Is that not a from. big issue? But like what growth point? So yes, yes. So it's it's, it's the JSE listed companies, but of course we do know that some of them also have international yeah, exposure. Yeah, so you yeah. also find in there the likes of Capital and Counties or Intuit Property, the UK yeah, listed okay. property companies. But so, so there is some rand mm. hedge built into this index, but, but not a lot. Not a lot, and it's mm. a lot more exposed to whatever happens in the South African market. So just market. explain to us again. So if Standard Bank first rand, and if there's a debt downgrade, that means their own cost of funding rises because they are also active in those same markets and have bond payments and other raising instruments, Indeed. then they will suffer the same margin compression. And that's why it's so negative. And that's why, you know, Nene Gate and all of those developments were very negative. And I think what you look at there is that it's a necessary or necessarily their debt rating will also be downgraded because you can't have a corporate yes, in an it. environment that has a higher rating than your sovereign credit rating. Yeah. So as the sovereign gets downgraded, so will also your corporate and, of course, your bank debt as Do well. Do we have a share chart of what this looks like? Because the STX fin, uh, which is the code, right? That mm. would be something that's been around a while. So yeah. there you go. It yeah. doesn't look that bad. I thought it would be <laughs> a little bit more uh, savage, the downgrade at the yeah. end of 2015. Yeah. So, so I think the point that you make there is very valid. And that's, I think, how one needs to view the Satrix Finney also, is that it is something that will no doubt be very negatively mm. affected on the news of a downgrade. Coming after that, I think you will have a reassessment of the bank's capital adequacy. You'll find that South African banks continue to be very well capitalized. Correct. And I think yeah. once the market has adjusted for that higher cost of their debt, you will actually find that this recovers a lot quicker than, than maybe, mm. say, government bonds, for example. I so see. for me, the Satrix Finney, uh, where we are now, is, is a not hot. I would yes. not be buying it now. But as and when we do get downgraded and you get that negative reaction, for me, that would mm. represent a buying opportunity. Look, the thing is still a bit tricky and is it S&P is the one that everybody's worried about specifically and well, when I say it's tricky I yeah. mean it's not a foregone conclusion. No, absolutely not. Because the economic activity that we might see reported in the midterm budget statement is one thing. The politics is another, mm. but it's a bit of a mixed up picture. It is, although the, the process by the ratings agencies yeah. is much more a quantitative process. In other words, they look at the hard numbers, yeah. typically mostly the economic numbers. And unfortunately, it's not just the GDP growth that's not sufficient, but it is all about the debt ratios that we have. Fiscal and collection rates, uh, tax all collection, the net debt to GDP, all that stuff. So what you're saying is that it's not only about like, is Tuli Modonsela no. a wonderful person and is she going to get a nice job now that she's no longer the public protector? Is the public protector playing ANN in the reception? It's not actually exactly. about that stuff. Exactly. It's about the actual numbers of tax collections and economic activity in the country. Exactly, more than exactly. Else. And because so many of those ratios have the GDP as its denominator, yep. the lower your GDP, the higher those ratios, which kicks them outside of the allowable yeah. band yeah. for a certain rating level. Okay, and so that's you're what definitely not hot on this one, but your no. sense, and that's interesting, is that it may present a buying opportunity at some Absolutely. point into 2016, 2017. Yeah. So watch out for yeah. the shock, and once the shock is in is in the numbers, <laughs> then I would reassess and potentially have that as a hot. Excellent. Well, let's